In this video, we're going to go over the inorganic phosphate translocase, or just the phosphate transporter. Just like we talked about in the previous video, we have the adenine nucleotide translocase in the inner membrane, and we also have it in the outer membrane. This is the mitochondria. It's double membrane, so remember you have to imagine an outer membrane somewhere over here that divides the cytosol from the inner membrane space. Okay, and these both of these proteins the uh, nucleotide translocator and the phosphate translocator, these are going to be in both of those membranes. Okay, Now, remember what our goal is. We have to provide the substrates needed for ATP synthase, meaning we need ADP and phosphate. So we need to transport this phosphate into the matrix so it can react and form ATP. The problem is, is phosphate doesn't tend to move over by itself. Okay, that reaction is actually endergonic overall. It won't occur. So we have to couple it with proton transfer. Now remember, the proton pumps, complexes 1, 3, and 4 of the respiratory chain, they pump protons from the matrix into the inner membrane space. So they create that proton gradient where the concentration of hydrogen ions is really high in the inner membrane space and pretty low relatively in the matrix. So when hydrogen diffuses through the protein, into the matrix, that's a spontaneous reaction, meaning a large negative delta G. Okay, It occurs spontaneously. So we're going to do something called energy coupling, where we couple the hydrogen movement, which is exergonic, to the phosphate movement, which is endergonic, making the whole process exergonic overall. And that's energy coupling and an example of secondary active transport. Now the fact that this moves hydrogen ions across in the same direction as ATP synthase, but yet it does not couple it to ATP synthesis, gives this type of protein a name as an uncoupling protein, or it's an uncoupling reaction. Okay? ATP synthase is an example of a coupling reaction because it couples the hydrogen ion movement to ATP synthesis. This is uncoupling because it does no such thing. It moves the hydrogen ions across according to the concentration gradient, but does not couple it to a reaction like ATP synthase does. Okay? And so ultimately, we need to get the phosphate into the matrix. But you might also say, well, how do I get the phosphate into the inner membrane space from the cytosol? Well, remember, we have this outer membrane that you have to imagine this right here. And we also have an inorganic phosphate translocase in that membrane. And so we start off with phosphate in the cytosol. We move it into the inner membrane space. And then we move it into the matrix. Okay, It's a similar concept. All right. So ultimately, the goal is to get the phosphate in the matrix so it can react with ATP synthase, and you make ATP. Okay, so these two proteins, the inorganic phosphate translocase and the adenine nucleotide translocase, are really, really important for the synthesis of ATP. We often just talk about ATP synthase and just say, well, it just makes ATP, but we forget to think about how does the ATP get out of the matrix, because certainly that's not the only place that it's used. All right, so make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.